What's up, guys? Well, figured I'd do a uh, quick little video on my emulation computer here. It's in a Fractal Design Node 202. It's got a it's got a Intel Core i5 10400F for a mother or for a uh, processor. And let's see. For the main board, we've got a Biostar Z490T Silver, Comic League. Memory is Corsair. And these are the clocks. I got Corsair Vengeance LPX, I believe, is the exact model. And then over here, we have a Sapphire Vega 64. Which I've undervolted quite a bit since it's a blower style cooler. Here's a little eight hardware monitor. Uh, anyway, it's also got a silver or a uh, fractal design 650 watt gold power supply in it. And let's see, that's about it really as far as specs go. It doesn't have any fancy RGB or anything, seeing as though it's just a it's just a case I'm using a stock CPU cooler because you can't overclock a 10400F anyway. I mean, I think there might be a way on this motherboard to lock the boost clocks, but I haven't figured it out yet. And also, the, another thing is the if you've noticed there, the RAM for whatever reason will not post at anything other than command rate 2T, which adds a little latency, but. The fact that I've overclocked the RAM to 3200 megahertz probably gets me more FPS in games rather than 2133 or whatever this thing's supposed to be standard. Anyway, let's run a benchmark or two just to see where this thing uh, stacks up compared to some other computers. Remember, this is mostly just my emulation computer and, you know, games like this. You know, stuff with a controller. I definitely don't do anything on here. With a mouse and keyboard really beyond type <laughs> in something in like a url or whatever anyway let's uh, get on with those benches oh yeah real quick before i got on with benches i wanted to real quickly just run uh show off my uh under volts for my vega so far this is what i'm sitting at i'm still tinkering with it but that's what i'm getting for the core and then down here the memory and then we've got the power limit maxed fan speed all right let's get on with the benchmarks okay we're gonna start with some Cinebench 20 do a single core and a multi-core benchmark on it and let's get it started all right, well, for the first Cinebench test, multi-core we got 3207 and a single core of 434. So it still puts it quite a bit behind a 7700K in single core. But still, for a $140 processor, not bad at all. Not bad at all. Well, let's move on to the next test. Figured I'd do a quick CPU Z benchmark real quick. This one is real quick, so we'll just do this one live. All right, again, not bad. 36.56 for multi and 4.94 for single. And on to the next one. So now we're gonna move on to uh, 3D Mark. Figure we'll start with Fire Strike, just the regular old Fire Strike, and then I'll do a uh, Time Spy as well. So all right, let's click Run. Right, so here's our Fire Strike score, 19,000, 
698. For a graphics score, we got 24102. Physics 17502. And combined, 9027. So now let's move on to the Time Spy part. Time Spy, we get 7295 with a graphics score 7263 and a CPU of 7484. Here's the average and best. And on to the next one. All right, well, last up, I figured to do a super position benchmark. We'll do a 4K optimized and see how that does. Well, all right, let's get started. Oh yeah, and check out how loud this thing gets. Both that Intel stock cooler and the Vega reference model are both very loud. What I really need to do is open up that Vega and probably repaste it. It's probably getting pretty dried and nasty, but even then it's still gonna be loud. But at least it's quiet for, you know, emulation, movies, and that kind of stuff. It's can't even tell it's on. But I just usually turn the sound up really, really loud, and then I can barely hear this. But just thought it'd be kind of funny and interesting to show what it sounds like when it's actually being pushed hard. But, alright. Wait, turn back the camera back on when the thing's done benchmarking. All right, well, we got 5271, minimum of 30 FPS, average of 39, and a max of 53. And let's see, it got up to a max of 85 degrees apparently, but that's not surprising. All right, now, before we finish, let's just Let's just look at some of these things here. Here's the clocks that it stayed at, the average. This is all the way on the right here. So we definitely got a little thermal throttling going on here. But again, not to be surprised, seeing as though it's basically in a console-ish sized case. So I really need to upgrade that CPU cooler after all, it seems. Alright, here we go. Here's the GPU temperature. HVM got up to 91. The hotspot got up to a whole 100. That's pretty hot. 86. And it used up to 257 watts. But all right, that's about it for this video. I definitely have some uh, thermals to contend and to control here, so I would definitely be ordering a new CPU cooler, and I'll definitely be repasting that Vega and trying to undervolt it a little more. But anyway, till the next video, peace out, guys.